Hello everybody, welcome back to Airport Operations. Now, we've talked a little bit about traffic patterns, let's talk about runways. At an airport we'll find predominantly three types of hard surfaced runways. Okay, the first one is what we call a non-instrument runway. If you take a look here, this non-instrument runway really only has two markings. It gives me the runway number and the center line. Notice on this one it says 17R. Now, do you remember what the 17 might be? 170 degrees magnetic is the nearest magnetic heading. Why does it say R? Well, because at this airport there's really good restaurants? No, that's not the reason. Sometimes there might be more than one runway parallel to each other at any given airport. If they're parallel and they're both 1-7, then they'll be lettered left, if the pilot's going to 1-7 left, or R for right, if the pilot's going to 1-7 right. So you can see here, this is 1-7 right, it's considered a non-instrument runway. Because other than that number and the center line, it doesn't have any other additional marking. Well, what kind of additional marking might there be? Well, take a look at this second runway. This is what we call a non-precision runway. This is a runway for a non-precision instrument approach. Notice, this runway's got a little more marking. It still has the runway number, that's 28. So, where would I be flying in this case? I'd be at or close to a magnetic heading of 280 if I was landing on this runway. It's also got threshold marking, and in addition to the center line, do you see the big white boxes further down the runway? Those are called the 1,000 foot markers and are used as an aiming point. Finally, the third type of hard surface runway you'll see are what we call precision runways. Now, this runway has even more information. In addition to the number 17L for left, if they were parallel, and it's got the threshold marking, and it's got the center line, and it's got that 1,000 foot marker that we had on the non-precision runway, but now look carefully. It also has distance markers, and those distance markers going down that runway are spaced at 500 foot intervals. Now, what if I come into a runway at any given airport and I see a big old X? Sometimes that X might be standing up with lights on it or it might be painted on the ground. What does that mean? Take a look. The X on these runways indicates that runway is closed. Why is the runway closed? Oh, any number of reasons. The runway might be permanently closed because it hasn't been maintained and it's degraded, or it might be temporarily closed if it's undergoing some type of maintenance or um, painting or something like that. Now, in addition to the runway itself, there are other surfaces beyond the runway. Okay, two important ones we want you to know about. The first one is the displaced threshold. Now, do you see the white arrows coming up to the solid, thick, white bar? That solid, thick, white bar is what we call the threshold. When we land our airplane, we have to land beyond that threshold. The white arrows pointing to that threshold are saying, look, that threshold didn't start at the beginning of the tarmac. That threshold has been displaced further up that tarmac.
and you have to land at or beyond that white marking. Now, why might that be dis displaced? Well, it might be displaced for a number of reasons. There might be obstacles on approach that we have to get over, or there might be um, a different construction material in the, um, the area, arrow, uh, area where you see those long white arrows, okay? So it could be any number of reasons, but that's pointing us to a displaced threshold. Now, take a look at this runway. This runway also has a blast pad or stopway. So you see the threshold. You see the white arrows that are pointing to the displaced threshold. And then you see these yellow chevrons. The chevrons are the blast pad. Now here's the big difference. The area with the white arrows will support an aircraft taxiing, but not landing. The, arrow, the area with the yellow chevrons will not even support an aircraft taxiing. So that's blast area. Okay. The, the next thing we need you to be sure you understand about these runways are land and hold short operations. Now, land and hold short operations, flight instructors call lashos for short. Or if you're from Wyoming like I am, you think of a lasso. Well, it's lasho. It's short for land and hold short operations. L-H-S-O. What's land and hold short? Well, take a look at the example here. The aircraft tower controller might say, well, you're cleared to land on this runway so long as you can stop before this intersection. Why? I've got another airplane coming down that runway. So last show operations can be critical. So you have to make sure you understand last show markings and last show procedures. Here's a couple of review questions for this segment of the lesson. Take a look at these three runways, A, B, and C, and see if you can remember what are their names. Now, take a look at this segmented circle at this airport, look at the wind, director, uh, wind direction indicators, and look at these white markings. Again, imagine the top is north, the bottom is south, to your right is the east, to your left is the West. See if you could imagine appropriate runway numbers for those white markers and which direction the traffic pattern is.